Hi guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. So today we want to talk about macros, which is basically just a succession of key commands and is my personal favorite feature of this DAW and really what has gotten me into Studio One in the first place. What makes them so enticing, I want to show you right now. Let's take a look. The key to becoming truly great at macros is to be able to spot redundancies in your workflow. What I mean by that is that whenever you execute the same series of commands over and over again, and it takes you a lot of time to go through the menus, to right click stuff, just build a macro from that and it's going to save you so much time going forward. Once you're able to reflect on your workflow and go like, hey, why do I spend so much time following this command with this command and then this command from three different menus all the time, I should just do this in one command. As soon as you adapted this way of thinking, you'll become the best and fastest producer you've ever been, I promise. I want to give you a couple of real life examples for this very basic but powerful principle and you're going to find all of these pre-installed in version 4.5 Artists and Professional. The first one I want to show you is set loop and zoom in. So especially beginners, they can struggle with uh, zooming a little bit in Studio One. They often excessively use the E or W key to zoom back and forth. So a much better way to go about this is the macro set loop and zoom in from page five of the macro toolbar, which was actually contributed by yours truly. And it's something that I use all the time and I've also mapped this out on a hotkey. So the way this works is, let's say I want to work on this tiny blue section here. What I would need to do is set a loop range for this and then zoom in so that I see enough detail to work on this properly. I need the loop because otherwise I would need the listen tool over and over again for this section to work on it. Um, the loop is just much more convenient, but this makes for more commands that I have to execute in succession. What I would need to do traditionally is to click on transport loop selection and then I would have to go to view, zoom and zoom to loop. Then I can do all my editing here and once I'm done I need to go view, zoom and zoom to loop once more to get back to my initial view. Now doing this via the menus and just clicking there is so inefficient and if you would do it this way you would stop the third time you have to do it. Instead just click this macro here and it's going to zoom in directly, also set the loop accordingly. And once you're done with all your editing work here, you just click it again and you're back where you started. So when we look at this macro in detail, by right clicking it and choosing edit macro, you'll see that this is just a chained action of commands. It's not a new feature of Studio One, it's really just a chained action. And it's the two commands that we just discussed. And in front of it is just an auto scroll disable. This is just to prevent unexpected zooming results if you trigger this while you're playing back. The second macro that I want to showcase to you is event effects delay. So let's just right click it and edit macro to get a better view at what's happening here. As you can see, it utilizes the insert event effects keyboard shortcut that joined the team in version four. And we're gonna search this keyword right here in the key commands and here we find these three little dots. That means that you can add an argument to this command. In other words, once you double click this command and you add it to your list of uh, actions that are going to be triggered by this macro, you can once again double click it and either choose an effects chain or a certain device with a preset that you want to have opened as soon as this macro is being fired off. You can even set a tail if you immediately want to render this effect. So let's try this out in action on one of my drum fills in this song. First I'm going to use the set loop and zoom macro once again, but instead of clicking it here from the menu toolbar, I have mapped it to my middle mouse button. So if I press that, it's immediately in focus and the loop range is set. Much more convenient in my opinion. And all that's left to do is just click the event effects delay and boom, the event effect has been applied. Sounds much better than this where it just drops dead. Now note that you can also do this with regular insert effects like an EQ or a compressor. You don't have to do this uh, just with event effect plugins. And if you want to see what that looks like, just click on the edit macro button and the keyword that you need here is add insert to selected channels. 
The third macro is one of my favorites because it's so simple and it's something that everyone can use and everybody will see the benefit of, I'm sure. So imagine this, we have this little drum fill here with the event effect and we kind of like it and we want to have this on the second chorus as well, exactly like it is now. How would you normally do this? Well, first of all, we would navigate to the other event, then delete it, and now what everybody would do is click this one, this one, and then Command C on a Mac or Control C on Windows, and then Command V to paste, right? No matter if you use a lot of hotkeys in your workflow or not, I guarantee you're gonna use copy and paste. But again, this is a sequence of commands. So why don't we summarize that in a macro also? The cursor is already set where we have to go, so we don't need to do this extra step. This is why I included the macro copy and paste. If we look at this macro, it's literally just copy and paste. So instead of pressing two buttons for copying and pasting, we're just clicking one button. This is gonna save you so many keystrokes a day. I've actually mapped this out on Command C as a hotkey so that I always do it this way and don't fall back into old habits. For the occasional moment where I do need the traditional copy and paste, because for instance I need to switch a project before I paste, then I still have the normal behavior on Alt and C. And then there's macros that really feel like you've just added a new feature, because you're expanding on functionality that isn't directly included with Studio One. Check out my example for this. On track three, you can see that I have a number of very small events that I would like to select. Now, how would you do this traditionally? You could either try to set a range, or you would have to select all of these manually, or even worse, you would have to delete something to then be able to select this properly. Well, with a macro called select in between, none of this is necessary. This macro is a little bit more complex, but because you only have to set it up once, and I already set it up for you when you install Studio One, you're just gonna use it like any other button or of course hotkey. Last but certainly not least, I wanna put your attention to the music editing page here in the macro toolbar. So there you're gonna find the select menu and it comes with a variety of really nifty little functions, especially if you're into MIDI editing and wanna get faster at it. When combining the power of this macro menu with the keyboard shortcut split at grid, you can do some truly amazing stuff that I'd like to demonstrate to you now. So I have a pad here, just a synth wavy pad sound. And let's say I want to have like an octaving retro bass line with that as quickly as possible. How would you go about that? Well. Let's see how fast we can do this with a select menu and then just think about how long this would take you if you were to do this manually. First of all, we want to select the lowest notes and then just transfer them with a right click to my prepared bass instrument. Okay, now we're just gonna switch to the bass and do this again, select the lowest notes. Now I want to adjust my grid setting to 1 8th and now I'm gonna trigger this hotkey split at grid that I just mentioned. Now again, I go to the select menu and I select everything that's offbeat. And now I can just octave this up. Let's split that again, this time into 16th notes. And now let's select only every third and octave that down. Maybe humanize it a bit. So that the starting point is slightly off every time and it sounds a bit more human. Or simply adjust the velocity. And all of that with just a couple clicks. Macros are still one of the most uncelebrated and yet most powerful features of Studio One. Nothing has more potential to revolutionize your workflow than customizing it with macros and I can only encourage you to do so. As Abraham Lincoln has said, give me six hours to chop down a tree and I will spend the first four sharpening the axe.